Now, Nomi, you yourself at a different point in your life were a managing director at Goldman Sachs. You also were at Bear Stearns. Part of the reason why I wanted to talk to you because for all of Donald Trump's attacks on Hillary Clinton during the campaign and the speeches that she gave at Goldman Sachs, Trump has had more Goldman Sachs alums in his administration at this point than any other president in history in terms of just the number this early on in his time in office. And you have a a piece this week about the Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin. And one of the things that Mnuchin has been doing for the administration is sort of threatening the public with financial disaster if a tax reform plan is not pushed through. And he's done this on national television. He's also done it at various summits where he's saying, look, I think to the extent we get the tax deal done, the stock market will go up higher. But there's no question in my mind, if we don't get it done, you're going to see a reversal of a significant amount of these gains. What is your analysis of what is happening right now on Wall Street under Donald Trump, where Trump himself says, you know, every single day we break a, you know, break a new record, 65 records since I became president on the Dow alone? I think that there's a couple ways to to consider what Mnuchin is doing. On, on the one hand, it's completely out of the playbook of a former Goldman Sachs alum who was a CEO um, and chairman of Goldman Sachs before he became Treasury Secretary for George Bush. And that was during the time of the financial crisis where he sort of got down on one knee in front of Nancy Pelosi, who was Speaker of the House, and said, if you guys don't pass I Congress this um, bailout bill for the banks, all the ATMs are going to cease to give money to people and there's going to be Armageddon and so forth. We must do so in order to avoid a continuing series of financial institution failures and frozen credit markets that threaten American families' financial well-being, the viability of businesses both small and large, and the very health of our economy. And so that was a way of of basically you know, tying Congress or at least you know, threatening. You're referring, of course, to the former Goldman Sachs CEO, Hank Paulson. That's correct, um, who was also the former Treasury Secretary. And, of course, Steve Mnuchin, who was only a former partner at Goldman Sachs and not the CEO, but 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 still pretty high. Um, actually, he left when I left, so he's done a lot of other things since then. But the point is that the the way in which both Hank Paulson back at the times of the bailouts in the beginning of the crisis and Steve Mnuchin, who's kind of using the same tactic to threaten the sort of health and level of the stock market if these tax cuts for corporations, which is mostly what he's talking about when he makes that threat, don't go through. It's really the same thing. It's really this instilling fear in, in Congress and, and perhaps the greater public to sort of be quiet about it with respect to Congress, that if if certain things aren't done to effectively help companies in the beginning of the crisis, it was to specifically help the banking industry from getting out of their own, um, the messes that they had created, many, many of which, much of which was created illegally. Um, and now with respect to corporations, what Steve Mnuchin was talking about and is talking about and is stumping about is a 42 percent tax slash in the actual substantive rate of taxation for corporations. And I mean, that, that is a substantial going from 35 percent to 20 percent, which is in the GOP bill. And his reasoning for that and, and for connecting it to the stock market and, and why Trump connects everything to the stock market um, is because it is the one thing that you can objectively look at that has a number that has gone up. You can't do that with wages. You can't do that with job quality. You can't do that with job longevity. You can't do that with your know, health coverage. You can't do that with lots of other things that most people count on um, for their day-to-day lives and to make the day-to-day payments and money that they need to survive them. But what the stock market shows is is not not the expectation that there was going to be a tax cut. What the what the stock, which is what he's saying, what the stock market shows is that for all of this period, and it happened during Obama as well, and yes, it's continued under Trump, there's been a situation where companies have been able to receive very cheap money because our rates are close to zero and they have been since the financial crisis in order to subsidize the money that was lacking at the time for the banking system. That money has gone to banks. Banks have bought back their own shares. Banks pay themselves dividends on their own shares that they bought. That pumps the stock market up. That's a significant set of buyers for their own stock. The same thing in companies um, throughout all of the different industry spectrums. They they get the ability to um, issue cheap debt or basically to borrow money cheaply because rates are so low. They use that that money not necessarily to expand 
Some of it they hide, as we were talking about earlier. Um, some of it they use to buy back their own stock, which enriches the top level of those firms, and it also pushes the stock market up. And then they also get dividends on their own stock. So all of that um, is more why the stock market has continued to rise throughout Obama's administration, as well as um, with Trump in there now, because nothing has been done to effectively change that. Mnuchin and Trump have added on to that and sort of taken credit for it by saying, well, because of us, because of these plans, because of expectations on these plans, things are going up. No, banks don't buy stock on expectations of plans. They buy stock because they have the money to do it and they're not they don't have to do anything else with it. Like, let's say, reserve it in case we have another emergency crisis and they you know, need to go back to the government for, for additional subsidies. That's not what they're doing. They're also, because of Mnuchin and, and Trump, which he doesn't talk about in the scare tactics, um, looking forward to more deregulation in terms of the rules um, under which they provide their services. Um, so rather than doing what Trump promised he would do, he promised a lot of things that he's not doing. But one of the things he promised to do um, was to actually break up banks, to bring back Last Steagall, um, the real one from 1933, not some pseudo weird one that Mnuchin talks about that would actually require banks to to split up, to, to use their deposits and their loans for real banking services, to bet when they need to on the side and not to have the subsidies from the Federal Reserve or the government. That's not what's happening. So if anything, if there's any modicum of rising that can be attributed to policies that this administration is pushing and to which Mnuchin in particular is pressing, it's it's the level of deregulation. It's not necessarily a taxation expectation because that that really hasn't baked in, been baked in, where certain deregulation movements have already been baked in.